Uh, I'm Timothy and this is Inchi and we'll talk about uh, automatic speech recognition and natural language processing. So here's a generic pipeline of how an application might look like that takes in input from the user and does some NLP processing and uh, does some sends it to some downstream application. So uh, there are a few forms the text could come in. You could have optical character recognition, which is scanning the text. You could have uh, speech recognition, which we are about to demo soon. Uh, you could also have direct user input, like as in a uh, chatbot, where the user types it in. So yeah, uh, we'll also be showing you how uh, NLP can be integrated into a, a downstream application, a basic, basic one. So over to you, ying -Chi. Thank you. Uh, so speech recognition is the first step in uh, a lot of voice-enabled technologies such as Siri. Um, it has been around for quite a while and has re in recent years gained a lot of momentum due to the advancement in AI. And in the next few minutes, I'll briefly walk you through how it works under the hood and then show you a simple demo. So the basic sequence of events are as follow. Uh, you speak into your device, and then the device creates a waveform from the sound, and some pre-processing is done, such as reducing the background noise and normalizing the volume. And then um, this filtered waveform is broken into what we call phonemes. Phonemes are the sounds used to build words. For example, the English language itself has 44 phonemes. So each phoneme is like a link in the chain. Based on the first phoneme, uh, analysis is used to find the most likely phonemes to follow. And similarly, words are connected in the same way. So um, as a developer, what options do you have if you would like to incorporate speech recognition into your app? So for browser, we have this JavaScript web speech API, which is currently still in the draft stage. So it has um, very limited browser support. Currently, only Chrome has a decent support for it. And it uses Google speech recognition engine under the hood. So your speech actually gets sent across Google server, so it doesn't work offline. Alternatively, you could use third-party APIs, uh, which unsurprisingly uh, dominated by uh, the big players here, um, expect to pay for such services, although some of them are free up to a certain limit. So in the demo that I'll be showing you later on, um, I use the web speech API, uh, which basically just takes a few lines of code to work. So firstly, um, you check whether your browser supports it and then you create a new instance of the speech recognition object. And then um, there are options for you to uh, set a couple of attributes, such as continuous, which by default is false, meaning uh, if the user stops speaking, the engine stops recognizing. So in my demo, I set it as true, so that even as I pause, uh, it continues to listen. And then for interim results, uh, the default is also false, meaning only results that are final get sent back. So in my demo, I set it as true, so that uh, as I speak, I get a stream of results back. And then there's this max alternative, which default to one, meaning only one result alternative gets sent back. So in my demo, I set it as three, um, just to show you, but usually the first result is the most accurate one. And the on result event handler is fired whenever the API sends back a result. So from here, we are able to uh, extract the transcript as well as the corresponding confidence score, which basically is the confidence level it has of the accuracy of the transcript. And then finally, we just fire the call to start it. So uh, on to the demo. Oh. Hello, exclamation mark. How are you? Question mark. I am fine, comma. Just kind of busy, period. Stop. 
All right. Okay. As you can see here, um, the API recognizes punctuation as well. Uh, so let's take a peek at the event object which contains the result. So yeah, so from here we are able to extract the transcript as well as its corresponding confidence level. As you can see, um, some of them just return more than one alternative uh, because I set the max alternative as three, as you can remember. So yeah, it's very easy to, to, to just start making such simple application with speech recognition. Uh, so I would encourage you guys to just explore by yourself. So, no, no, Right, move on. So, before I end my part, I would like to introduce you to this interesting open source uh, project uh, initiated by uh, Mozilla called Common Voice. As I mentioned earlier, the the speech recognition field is largely dominated by the big tech companies. Why is that so? Uh, small companies find it really hard to penetrate into this market, mainly because building a speech recognition engine requires a huge amount of human speech data set. So um, the existing players have this built-in advantage where they are able to easily gain such access to the data from the millions of users who are using their pro uh, voice-enabled products glo globally. Yeah. So um, the main aim of Common Voice is to uh, make it easier for developers who don't have such resources, right? To, uh, by building in an open source um, data set of voices where anyone can just use and train uh, a speech uh, application, speech enabled application basically. So, so this is the website. Um, do give it a visit uh, when you're free. I find it really interesting. You cannot only uh, choose to contribute your voice, you can also choose to validate the voices as well. Yeah. So um, speech recognition is just the first step. Um, how do we make machines understand the meaning behind the text and, and really um, make more complex, uh, perform more com complex tasks so as to do things like um, give you the weather forecast or even order pizza for you. This is where natural language processing comes in. So uh, I'll just hand over the time to Tim. So very cool, Ying Chi. Uh, now. So now I'm going to talk about uh, natural language processing and uh, I'll start off with a demo. This is a project I created as part of the Jumpstart program where we uh, have to do these uh, little projects to apply what we have learned. So, uh, hello. So what this does is if I say cats and dogs, it should return photos of cats and dogs or dogs. Eventually. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So yeah. So um, yeah. What's happening under the hood is that uh, I'm doing some natural. Wow. Hood. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And let's close that. So. So what's happening under the hood is that. Um, I'm using natural language processing to extract the, the nouns and topics from whatever I'm saying. And these are then passed to uh, the Unsplash API, which is a content delivery uh, network out there that gives you high resolution, wallpaper worthy photos. So, 
So what's so what this uh, what normally happens in an NLP application is that um, you have the text coming in and it's pre-processed uh, in whatever form it is to become text. Then you have a tokenizer that splits it on white space. So you have individual words. Then you have a, a part of speech tagger that classifies them as nouns, verbs, adjectives. And uh, you also have some kind of negation detection where it'll, it'll detect the, the negative of whatever you are talking about. So it also then does a further uh, classification into people, places, uh, organizations. And uh, for the more advanced ones, they do some kind of dependency passing in which they uh, identify relationships between the words in a sentence. So this is a very simple library that I use for my app. It's, uh, it can run offline because it doesn't, it's just based on regex. Uh, it does, it has a, quite a small dictionary and it just matches whatever it can find. So some examples of what you can do is you can uh, mutate the, the, <coughs> the tense of a verb. You can get the people, places, organizations. And yeah, I'm in, in the app, I'm just, uh, extracting a random person found in the, the last 10 words that have spoken or places or nouns or organizations and then I serve them to the, the app.js. So if you want more powerful functionality, uh, you will have to turn to cloud solutions unless there's some pro proprietary uh, program out there. Um, so one, one of them is uh, Optical character recognition, Amazon Textract. So this doesn't just uh, read what's in a scanned um, document and pull it out as a string. It actually understands tables and forms. It understands the relationship between uh, all these uh, data structures. And so what you can, do, what it allows you to do is then push this directly into a database just by scanning what uh, whatever you are interested in storing. So, yeah, another one is uh, natural language processing. Um, Amazon and Google Cloud Platform both have their uh, versions of this. And uh, unlike that small library, this is actually doing some kind of uh, statistical processing. And I guess uh, the advanced stuff like the dependency passing as well. So, yeah. Thanks for listening to our talk. Um, if you have any other questions, you can come find us after the talk. Thank you.